Hi, I'm Dr. Sunil Dashipali. I'm a senior orthopedic, joint replacement, sports medicine consultant at Ashoda Soma Juguda. Today's our topic is about knee replacements. I'm sure we've heard a lot about the knee replacements, but there are still some things that are missing. There's still some versions wherein people have some misconceptions as to the amount of bed rest. Some people still believe that they have to have a complete bed rest for months together to weeks and some people are under the impression that they're going to have a lot of pain. So these are the few misconceptions that we have about uh, knee replacements and it's my duty to enlighten you about uh, the latest things that are available. Now I just want you to be oriented as to what is in normal knees. If you look at the knee joint there, this you can see the surface. This is smooth, this is normal. Now if you look at this one, you can see some irregularities. So this is a little bit of arthritis. Whereas if you take this one, it's completely gone. So if you are in this stage, that means you need a knee replacement. But still, as doctors, we suggest knee replacement only when you have pain that is stopping your day to day activities. To say simply when you think your life is not worth living. Have a knee replacement and you'll have a second life. That's an easier way because pain is the only indication. I have seen some people having bad x-rays and knees like that, still they are walking around. It mainly depends on how good your muscles are and uh, what about your nutritional status and also the pain uh, threshold that you have. So depending on these things, we sometimes delay surgery if the patient is quite comfortable in spite of having very bad x-rays. So whenever you have severe pain, go for a knee replacement. If not, you could wait, but please continue doing the exercises. Now, Corona as we know is something that has come out of the blue. It's very difficult all over the world for people to make a strategy and also trying to find a way which is the right way. So right now we are dealing with an emergency situation in the world. So what we suggest is have emergency surgeries or we call semi-emergencies wherein there are some ligament ruptures which we don't want to leave it too long. Otherwise they become contracted and then you have missed the boat. So commonly we do fractures which uh, need surgery that we do not hesitate to operate. The fractures that we can manage without operation, we use plasters or splints. And some ligament injuries like your shoulder ligament, the muscle in the shoulder if it's completely torn and it is gone bad, you might wait for some time but not too long also. Too long, again there are problems for, it to, for us to stitch it back to. And coming to the knee replacements, I know there must be some people who are really, really struggling with just putting few steps going to the washroom. In these scenarios, if you come to us, we try to alleviate your pain, mainly with simple things like ointments, physiotherapy, some exercises and some injections. Now, in spite of all these things, there are some people who do not get any relief and who feel life is a burden. In those scenarios where we call it a semi-emergency, we might consider the knee replacement do I need to do take prolonged bed rest after knee replacement surgery? That's the next question. Well, that is what, uh, as I said, that there are lots of misconceptions about knee replacement surgery and the amount of bed rest you need to take. Now, surprisingly, most of my patients are walking within four hours after surgery. This might be, you know, looking a little bit uh, interesting because um, you might be wondering, having so much pain, how these patients can walk? We make sure that the patients are pain free first. So we have a fantastic pain team. So a knee replacement surgery is not just surgeon oriented procedure. It's mainly to do with the teamwork. It's a surgeon, the team which includes physiotherapists and also the anesthetists who form the pain team. They assess you regularly, they give you some pain relief which are not painkillers but they, we do what is called blocking the nerves which only take away the pain but you still have the muscle strength. So we assess your safety to make sure that you're fit to go out in four hours. Now you might be wondering why should we bother walking in four hours? Majority of these surgeries, if you have prolonged bed rest, you might end up with clots in legs or chest, which might be more derogatory. Now also, imagine the patient's plight. They come with a fixed mind that after knee replacement, that they'll have to have a lot of bed rest. And if they walk in within four hours, their confidence levels boost up. 
they're really happy that something surprising, pleasantly surprising has come to their life and they participate more in the physiotherapy later on and get out of the hospital very quick. So majority of the patients can be made to walk within four hours after a knee replacement surgery. Like we discussed, the day one, if I do the surgery in the morning, by evening the patient should be walking. Majority patients do and we assess if the patient is very old, having a lot of pain and not stable enough, we give them rest for that day. If uh, they're quite comfortable, we make them walk that evening. The next day, they'll be walking around in the ward and the day after, they'll be walking and they'll have other training like come out training where they can do, go to the washroom on their own. And the last day, they'll be walking and we'll also do them stair climbing. See, the whole idea of this hospital stay is to make you independent. Now, we don't want you to depend on any of your family members or servants or mates for them to carry you around and sometimes you might feel miserable. We want you to have a simple walker, get on your feet, go to the washroom whenever you want. See, this is the main thing most of the patients are worried about. See, whenever they want to go to the washroom, they sometimes feel shy or feel a little bit problematic calling their own relatives or the mates or the family members. So this enables them to do their day-to-day -day activities on their own. That's number one. The number two thing is like, you know, you go around, you go, you can eat on your own and go for a little bit of fresh air. If you have a bigger house or, you know, some uh, fresh air outside, you can go sit outside. So that will enable your quicker recovery. So at two weeks, we take out your stitches and then you can have bath. Even within two weeks also, you can have bath. We have made provisions wherein your wound is properly covered and then you can have shower. And after two weeks, you continue to have physiotherapy for almost a month the physiotherapist will come home and again here they are not physiotherapists they are physiotherapists so don't be afraid of them i do agree there are lots of again misconceptions saying oh it's very painful people keep on crying the reason is earlier days the probably the modalities are a little bit more blunt now the modalities have improved and most of our physiotherapists are very well trained. So they try to go with you, they are very empathetic and try to give you least pain whilst getting you doing the exercises. Now almost after a month you should be able to do everything on your own without any walking aids and you will be able to do your household chores and after two months you are good to go out do shopping. Usually what we say is at around three months you don't feel as if you had a surgery. So these are stepwise. Now day one when you had surgery, you might be having some pain, but as I said, we have a fantastic pain team so that you'll have least possible pain and majority of my patients will have a good night's sleep as well. So gradually your pain levels go down and that's when your mobility improves. Now, as I said, the mobilization. See, you go gradually. You don't want to jump four feet at a time. You want to go one step at a time. So as you gradually progress, you want to improve the muscle strength and also the knee bending. Majority of the knee replacements nowadays that we do have complete knee bending. It's as good as you can squat on the floor. Now that's very important. We're not doing it to make you squat on the floor every day. We want to give you very good movements so that you don't feel hindered. But my suggestion is please do not try and test it every day. Whenever there is a need, once in a while, it is fine. Otherwise, any knee replacement will have loosening. It might be 5 years, 10 years, 20, 25. Nowadays, with the latest implant, we have the longevity of about 20 to 25 years. That's when the thing that we put in becomes loose and then we'll have to change it. So when you do things like squatting every day, it becomes loosened quicker. So we'll have to change earlier. So try not to test it every day. And other precautions, like I said, initial days, you don't want to make the wound wet. So for two weeks, you want to leave it dry. And then after stitches are taken down, then you can have a bath or shower and the wound is dry. Initially, you want to have regular physiotherapy. And my request to anybody who is having knee replacement please remember to do the exercise lifelong like you eat to live you please do exercise so that the knee replacement lives if you don't want it to be redone in your lifetime if you keep your thigh muscles really strong there are instances the knee replacements went up to 30 35 years i had done a revision revision is changing of a hip replacement that was earlier done in 1963 after 40 years I have revised that. 
This was in uh, UK wherein I was trained, the first joint replacement that was done in the world. I was really surprised when I first saw that lady because 1963 you can imagine the amount of uh, technology that was there. Still the precision the surgeon has done. The first surgeon who was very successful was Sir John Chandy. So I worked in his institute called Wrightington Hospital. So he done in 1963 and I've changed it in 2003. So 40 years. It all depends on you. So if you keep your muscles fit, if you're healthy, it can go up to 30 to 40 years. So that is my suggestion. Well, like uh, we discussed earlier, uh, the hospital say at the most is four days. But nowadays, we are cutting it down to almost three days. When the patient is very comfortable, we send them off in three days. The majority go home in three days, some at four and very few at five. Now, at the end of the day, it's not like a benchmark that you have to be discharged in so and so. We always go with the patient because at, at the end of the day, we are all human beings. Each person has their own way of uh, tackling their issues. So we want to tailor make to that patient. If the pain is more, we want to slow down. The pain is reasonable and acceptable. We want to go at their pace. So on an average, you are in the hospital between three to four days and at the worst scenario, about five days. Well, that's a good question. Now, there are lots and lots of implants available. Now, you must have heard of oxygenium knee, gold knee, and uh, chromium cobalt knee. There are lots of things coming up. It's a private company that manufacture these implants. So obviously, there is a lot of marketing strategies and also lots of new in inventions. Now, most of us follow what is called evidence-based practice. That is, we look at the evidence as to what is the history of that particular implant that we put inside you? How long has it been there in the market? What are the common problems that have been there? And when does it fail? How many years is it going to stay? And when does it fail? And what are the common problems that we can sort out? So these are the things we look at. So we have what is called worldwide some joint registries. I keep regularly following that to see. We, there are lakhs and lakhs of uh, knee joint replacements have been done so far. So we get a lot of update from that. Now the commonly done knee replacement, the metal there is called chromium cobalt and in between the like as you can see there, it's like a cup, you know, it's almost like you put a cap to your tooth. If you have a TK tooth, they do the root canal and just put a cup. So that becomes painless. Similar this one. So what we do, we put a cap on top of the thigh bone and the shin bone and in the center if you see this is the plastic but it's not a simple plastic it's called ultra molecular weight polyethylene so this is a very tightly densely packed plastic so the wear rate what we say is very less so that it lasts longer now this material is chromium cobalt like i said this can also come in oxygenium so the oxygenium coating that is very smoother and there's another called gold these are all nothing but the names of the alloys so there is a big alloy and the simplest way is to look at its color and say it's a gold knee or somebody would like to call it as a ceramic knee these two knees oxygenium and ceramic that have come newly into the market have a smoother finish and the hope is that it's going to stay long now do we have a full-time study to see how long it's going to go no but oxygenium has been there in the market for almost past 20 25 years it's still going good and gold knee or the ceramic knee that has come newly into the market probably in the last two three years so it's still in the baby stage now what is my personal choice now my personal choice is for most of the people in India they want very good bending the very good bending is for their daily, daily chores and also religious regions. These are the reasons that they want as much bending as possible. So I usually go with what is called high flex design, wherein we get almost as good as normal. So majority of the, my patients, they can squat on the floor. Now the next one is, uh, if it is a patient is very young, I choose either oxygenium or gold, but I give the choice to the patient. The reason being, um, I don't have adequate data to say it's gonna last for 40 years or 50 years. That is what they project, the companies project that it's going to last better than the previous product. So we have to wait till that time, probably around 30, 40 years, till we say it is completely foolproof. But so far the studies have shown that these two models are giving good results. And also the plastic that we put in, in between, it is uh, densely packed like I said, 
and uh, it's a highly cross-linked polyethylene. So the wear rate is very, very less. So these are the three options. If it's an elderly patient whose lifespan is about 30 years or 25 years, I would go with a high flex design and uh, probably put a chromium cobalt. The reason being, it's a little bit on the economical side. Now, if you go for the oxenium, it's a little bit more dearer and uh, the gold is almost equivalent to oxenium. So the choice is yours of all the three. Yes, there are exercises that we call prehabilitation. Now, the, you should remember that knee replacement is a, a elective surgery. It's not an emergency. So you can choose a date and you can choose when you want to. So my suggestion is you have a plan when you want to have surgery and before that, try to build up your muscles. The reason being, if your muscles are really good, you can get up and walk within four hours, like I said before, and that boosts your confidence. And post-surgery, the physiotherapy will be much, much easier. It's simple. Like, you know, if you see the bodybuilders, when they started off building their muscles, very lean with lifting lots of body weights, it would have been very difficult for them. But if you start off midway, when the muscles are reasonable, so it's easy to build up the muscles. So my suggestion, before the knee replacement, at least a month before, start doing simple exercises like walking and strengthening your thigh muscles. Do that on a regular basis. And if possible, use some ankle weights to strengthen it more. During the stay in the hospital, what we do is we get you a physiotherapy and we make you walk around comfortably so that you do your daily activities. But we don't concentrate much on the muscle strengthening. And once you're discharged from the hospital, that's when we concentrate on getting your muscle strength. At the same time, the movements. So this goes gradually. So everything is like, you know, patient based. If the patient is taking reasonably okay, we go at the same pace. If they are too sensitive, we want to slow down. So to say within a month, I expect you to be walking around without any walking aids and you should be able to do your household chores within four weeks. I mean, there are people who surprised me. There was a professor who went back to teaching within two weeks after surgery climbing stairs of the university. Even the students were surprised. And uh, the pleasant surprise for me was a lady who cooked a very beautiful sweet for me within two weeks after surgery. When she came for the follow-up, she brought her around this sweet saying she cooked herself. It's a very pleasant surprise for us, uh, like the sweet itself, because we want all of the patients to be happy and have a happy ending. At the end of the day, they should be comfortable. I usually tell all the, my patients that you should enjoy your surgery. The reason being, some people come to me saying, uh, can I have both the knees done at the same time? Now, somebody told me that, uh, you know, pain within pain. So you had some, you're having some pain, also have some more pain and finish off once and for all. Now, I want to say one thing. You're not going to eat for tomorrow. We know we are going to be hungry tomorrow, but we are eating only whatever we are hungry for today and then leave it the rest for tomorrow. If you keep on stuffing yourself, sometimes you might not be able to tolerate it. The only reason we do both the knees at one sitting is financial reasons. Yes, if you are paying for your surgery, we can cut down the cost significantly because we are operating on the same day at the same time. That cuts your operation cost, your operation theater, the surgeon, anesthetist, all the costs are cut down. So your probably the final bill might be less. But you should always remember that this is going to come with a price. The pain is going to be a bit more than you expect. And it, it's not as comfortable as it is with a single knee. Because once you get one knee operated, the other knee that you are used to will get you around. So you feel more confident and you do your daily activities within day one. So if you have uh, both the knees on the same day, usually it takes a day or two extra. And the pain might be a little bit on the higher side. So these are things you should be very well prepared before you embark on a single side or two side surgeries on the same day. Post-operative pains are well taken care of in our Yashoda hospital. The reason being we always make sure we have a pain team. So the team has a consultant anesthetist, some of the trainees and also pain nurses. So somebody will be walking around every day and they do what is called pain score. So we either show uh, small figures like you know smiley face and all or we give the number 1 to 10 and score it so depending on your pain score we as the pain team we give you medication and also the physiotherapist will come around they can use what is called cold therapy when when you put ice most of the times the pain decreases and also the swelling so we try to use different modalities of you no know, pain relief 
to make sure first thing is it's not going to do anything bad for you like you know if you give lots of painkillers the kidneys are going to go for a six so we don't want to give too many painkillers we want to use different type of pain relief modalities and decrease your pain make you comfortable and walk you around before you go home now day one like i said might be more painful day two will be much less and as you're progressing when you are leaving hospital you are good enough to just sustain on simple tablets once in a while you might need an injection at home if you have some uh, a nurse or, a, or some doctor nearby majority of the times you don't need and we always suggest patients other remedies like ice packs and also some physiotherapy and when you do this gradually the pain decreases and like i said within a month you should be able to most of your activities thank you